Adam Kirby with an absolute crackerjack here on our Oyster Catcher. Adam, Dale Gibson has just said that is an outstanding ride on this horse. I know it's not like Mick Canan saying it's outstanding because it's Dale Gibson, but still, praise is praise. Yeah, no, very much appreciate it. Don't get a lot what, of it. Even from Gibbo? Yeah, don't get a lot of it. Every little helps, doesn't yeah. it? He wasn't the most stylish, though, Dale Gibson, was he? No, he wasn't. No, no. he wasn't. No. He's Luke Morris's idol, you know. Well, to be honest, they are like love charts, aren't they? And yeah. there's a certain, if Luke just lost a bit of hair as well, there would yeah. be a similarity. There is a big similarity, mm. yeah. Anyway, look, tell us, dare I say it, a nose has made the difference here. <laughs> Why yeah. do you look at me like that? No, but it has, but, um, but no, he's, um, no he's, a little, he's got a little bit of fire in him, but uh, he'll, he'll have a nice future. If it goes the right way, he'll have a nice future. Um, you know, he's... He didn't want to let him off the bridle. He didn't really know what he was doing. He was he spent more time in the air and changing his leads than what he did galloping. So um, there's a lot of improvement in him. Just hope he hope he goes um, the right way. Whenever you see a horse hooded first time, you know there have been a few problems at home. Just the fact you could try and settle the horse and do all those kind of things is just part of why that was a real cracker. Yeah, well, no, listen, I'd, I'd have liked to have got him dropped in and, and, and got him to finish his race a little better. But, um, you know, he hit the gate so fast and he got on with it and there wasn't a lot I could do. But... Uh, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be a horse that's going to be uh, held up anyway. Just for the future of the rest of the season, is is every day for you counting down to the Sprint Champions Day? You presumably just cannot wait to get back on Harry and that. Yeah, no, obviously he's, he's exciting, isn't he? And um, and I like riding him, and you know it's great. And very pleased, and thanks to everyone that I kept the ride on him. But um, you know, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's just lovely to see you because I thought the, when the when the evenings ended, that was it for you and me. But we're back. Yeah, we're back. No, we're good. It's good. Always good to see you. Hi, hi. Let's see if we can have a chat with Mrs. Veazey. I'm not absolutely sure whether she'll be happy to chat. But Mrs. Veazey, hello, lovely to see you. Hello, welcome. Welcome to At The Race. Hello. Hello. Hello, we wanted to chat to you because I, of course, I used to book Daryl to bride the Whistling Teal for oh, you. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, gosh, did well, I'm, you? I'm a bit upset he never told oh, you. But. No, he never told you because I did see in the racing post that you dealt. Well, this was a long time ago now. The Whistling Teal was a terrific horse in these He still is. is. You still got him? Still got him. He's 22. How old is he now? 22. And he looks as like if he could run tomorrow. <laughs> Just because you would have known, and obviously he passed recently, Jeff, Jeff Rag, who trained the Whistling Teal. Sad, sad. Jeff Rag was my wife's cousin. Your wife, Mrs. Veazey, you were the cousin of Jeff Rag. So my what? mother married his mother. His, yes, his mother. Yes. Crikey. So just tell us what, how you would sum up Jeff Rag as a man and trainer. Well, Jeff was sweet. In the war, we all lived at Bedford Lodge, and I was the youngest. I always got left behind and he always gave me piggybacks. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, that's a new story for you. It is a new story for you. He always used to call me boy. Yes. I'd ring up and say, cut down, and he said, okay, boy. He <laughs> yeah, never left me behind. No. Look, this horse, I think you probably would know this as well. Adam Kirby has just given the your horse a cracking ride there. Oh, he did. Oh. Brilliant. Headstrong. This horse is a bit headstrong, so he wants to settle down. He'll be better next time. Yeah. He will do. Because you had the hood on first time. Yes. 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 Mm. To get him down there without <laughs> without running his race. No. <laughs> well, it's just tremendous to see these colours around winning still, and we wish you all the best. Thank you, lovely. They're all named after a bird, you see. Hold on. He does like to get in the... colours were my grandfather's. They were registered in 1900 and... Three, I think it was. Nineteen hundred and three. They've been and Bill, my brother, had my father, so I had grandpas. Okay. And you were saying? I was saying they're all named after a bird, like the whistling teal, you yeah. see, because we used to go to Blakeney. Sorry. Uh, who's, 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 go to Blakeney. Your father used to go to Blakeney, who is. Uh, and teal is uh, he's a shoot over Blakeney, so and all the family. Are hold on, hold on, Mrs. V. Uh, the whole family are named after a seabird. Mrs. V, you were saying, tell us about your your father owned who? Well, he, he used to go to Blakeney, and my, the, the Whistling Teal's mother was by Blakeney. So everything had to be called something that flew over Blakeney. I tell you what, you, you, you occasionally speak to people at a racetrack and you have no idea the conversations. And I could, I could speak to you two for the whole of the afternoon, to be quite frank. I tell you a lot more stories about that. Uh, Can you? No. no. Well, well, what are you going to Come on then. Well, did you know that Jeff Rag was, uh, was, uh, worked for Pi to Cambridge? came back and was an expert on uh, uh, computers, etc. He actually designed a, a f mobile phone and Pi turned it down. No way. Yes. I knew he was into the phones and he sort of, he kind of said he created mobile phones. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, when he, 
when they'd started to time the races at, in America, Uncle Harry, Harry Rag, who's my wife's uncle, you know, he went out there and they used phones for the first time. No, no, and timing lighted. They went on the lime kilns, which you'll know well, one spring, and Harry had three or four two-year-olds running, and his son Jeff timed them, and when he told Harry, he said, that's rubbish. You've got the timing wrong. He said, no, I haven't. He said, if you haven't, we'll have three runners at Ask uh, three winners at Ascot. And he had two winners in a second. Wow. And that was the first time it came to England. Yeah. First time ever yeah. used timing on, 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 on the lime kilns. I tell you what, dinner with you two would be an entertaining dinner. Look, congratulations here. You better get the prize, otherwise we'll be into the next race. But very well done, Mrs. V. Thank you. Prince Lindholm from Bavaria to hand over the winning photo frame and an extra special. <laughs> you get a little gem. <laughs> <laughs> they were they. Winning owners, uh, Mrs. V.